People, here I am once again, the Common Crazy Show, episode 72. 72. And uh, first of all, I would I would like to thank uh, Key Triple C and Public Access for making the show possible. And I would also like to thank the editor Marty, and of course you, the viewers, the viewers that have made what the Common Crazy Show is. And I'm very proud to say that you guys are my viewers and the viewers of all of us. Okay, first thing first, I do want to go off on a couple of uh, fourth tidbits. Arizona Cardinals beat the uh, Seattle Seahawks yesterday, 24 to 13. Who knew that they would be having a good running game? So let's see how the Arizona Cardinals do in the NFL. Then also, Ryan Newman, who's an up and coming driver in NASCAR, won the race Sunday, yesterday. And it was a race that was rained out. So I saw the whole race, we got a little last NASCAR but uh, he did a good job in staying first place. That's my fourth, uh, fourth idea segment for the show. Okay, then I want to talk about uh, some musical notes too also I found out this week. Mike Inez, former uh, bassist, bassist for the band, uh, the Ozzy Osbourne band, uh, later went on to join uh, 1993 Alice in Chains. Well, reportedly now he has joined Metallica the former bass player for uh, the se second former bass player for Alice in Chains is now in the band with Metallica. Hopefully, he'll be able to alter the sound because uh, it seems like uh, maybe though uh, they won't have the Metallica sound with that new bass player. We'll see how that comes out. Okay, uh, Chris Cornell. We all know who he is. He's the former lead singer for Soundgarden. Uh, we all know him for the past year and a half that he's been doing some jam sessions with uh, members of Rage Against the Machine without their lead singer. And uh, hopefully there will be a new album coming out pretty soon. But uh, it's official, Chris Cornell has joined the band with a former Rage Against the Machine member. So we'll see how that comes out. Maybe it'll sound like Third Soundgarden with a little uh, hip hop feel to it. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I've seen Soundgarden, by the way, a couple times. I saw them in the early 90s, and they were a great band. I, I saw them in 92, and they were great. Okay, then, uh, we all know and love The Doors. The Doors has been around almost 30 years, and they've still been rocking, even though he's been dead all this time, Jim Morrison. But apparently the remaining uh, members of The Doors had decided to get together with the former drummer of The Police and the singer, the lead singer of The Cult. We all know who he is, he's Ian Asbury, and Stuart Copeland is the drummer of the police who is now joined uh, with the singer of the cult in the door. They'll have a new album coming out, B Train Noon Song. Hopefully it'll do some justice to the whole idea and mentality behind the idea of the door. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get altered with these uh, new members. We'll just have to wait and see. Also, the Sex Pistols got uh, together with the Bucks Cox uh, to play a show in uh, Northern California. And believe it or not, the Bucks Cox and the Sex Pistols play together at a festival. I'll let you know more about that, but that's all I have on that on that news. And then, Nikki Six, uh, the bass player for Motley Crue, had decided to call it quits. But before he does that, and the other members of Motley Crue have decided to go on a farewell tour. Then after that, the farewell tour, 
uh, Nika Six, the bass player, will go on to make some movies, do some certain things, I guess, movie related. But I guess I heard through the grapevine, I guess it's official, I don't know yet, I have to find out, is that uh, they're making a Motley Crue movie. I heard that a lot on the radio and on uh, periodicals. But uh, they're saying they're making a Motley Crue movie that's going to come to uh, uh, shed some light on, on what really what really happened behind the scenes. And that should be interesting because uh, in the early 80s, that what I used to listen to and all that, and then some. So that was then and this is now. Okay, and then on a Hollywood note, uh, Kim Hunter, uh, we all loved her as the, the leading female chimpanzee in three of the Planet of the Apes movie, the original series of movies that came out in the early 60s. In the late 70s, she has passed away. So God bless that woman because she did a great job at being the lead female chimpanzee in the movie. Am I not correct? Okay, then uh, um, a couple days ago, I, for the hell of it, I, I read this book I found in my never-ending library. Uh, an old, tattered paperback of Eyes of the Dragon by Stephen King. The last time I read that was probably like 1988. It's been almost 13 years, and for the hell of it, I decided to read it, and I ended up reading it for like in two hours. And um, so I've been thinking in like a Stephen King mode for the past couple of days. So this morning I'm reading the paper, and it says, in the town of Bangor, a house explodes after a family of five moves in the day before. I don't know, you might not find that funny, but, but that's what happened in Bangor. Uh, I'm going off. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, the columnist for the Ch Ch Chicago Tribune, uh, the big paper in Chicago and Illinois, Bob Green, has resigned due to the fact that he had a what he called a minor indiscretion uh, with an uh, underage girl. But basically he had sex with a teenage girl and we'll all have to see if there's going to be any criminal charges against them because that motherfucker was quick to point out all the bad things out of people everywhere. He was a big time columnist uh, up in Chicago. He, his word came down to a lot of people that he influenced a lot of bullshit up in, uh, You know how that goes, gossips and politics and all that. But it now seems like the fucking final nail has been driven in his coffin because uh, there ain't no way that he's going to find any newspaper to sign him on to do the columnist. Because why? Because he's a molester. Bob Green's a molester. Okay, then in 1975 this month, the Bay City Rollers were the first musical band to appear on their uh, short-lived Howard Cold Sale Saturday Night Variety Show. And for all you people out there, the Bay City Rollers apparently is one of the, most, the biggest bands that include Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. So I get the time to say that. Apparently it's all big again. It was also this month, month uh, the month of September 1978, WKRP in Cincinnati came out. And I remember when that lame ass bullshit came out because it would get the lame ass version of Head of the Class. <laughs> and then in 1983, Kiss appeared on MTV without their makeup for the first time. There were some boos in the crowd, but overall, it went well. Okay, Martha Stewart is still not in jail. <laughs> Sopranos uh, uh, coming on the air pretty soon. Uh, I haven't seen the third season. I'm a busy guy. I'm a busy man. I don't have time to see the third season, but I'll get to it when it comes out on DVD. But uh, fourth, uh, fourth year Soprano comes on pretty soon, so let's see how that comes out. Okay, I feel like uh, I feel like a dud when I talk about American Idol, but yeah, yeah, too. I was a sucker for uh, American Idol. I watched it. I watched it every time. And I was hoping Kelly would win when she was the final ten uh, a finalist, and she did win. So uh, we'll see what more comes out of that. And in a weird way, the moment like this song that she has, I only heard it once, and I was like, it gets sugar pop. But we'll see what kind of more swing sound she can do because because uh, she did some really nice swing set on her, and not swing set, but some real nice swing set. Alrighty, I'm going off again. All right, all right, all right. Okay.
Uh, earlier in the show, I showed some pictures. Uh, the first picture I showed you guys was a, a picture of a couple of assassins shot to death after they tried to assassinate the president of Afghanistan. And that just gives me uh, an idea to talk about because it's been a year now since September 11th. It's been more than a year. Uh, it's been more than a year. And um, that first picture I showed you, it seems like no matter what, there's always going to be civil unrest, no matter where we're part of the world. It all affects us in some weird way now, now that September 11th has happened. So that was the first picture I showed you. The second picture I showed you was a picture of a mom, a corpse, a mother corpse, holding the baby corpse. Apparently back in 1988, Saddam Hussein was getting pissed off at these uh, couple villages that were trying to lead a revolt. And uh, he gets gassed them all to death, and even the women and children. And that was one picture I came across that featured that. That was back in 88. And people would say, why, why should he still be in power, blah, blah, about the oil? It's not even about the oil. It comes down to the fact that he used a chemical weapon, and, and he, might, he might have weapons of mass destruction. I know I sound lame like some of all fears, but that's the truth. It gets a matter of time that what's going to happen is that Saddam Hussein is going to get scared because even though as of today he said, Saddam Hussein said that uh, UN inspectors will be allowed back in unconditionally to uh, inspect uh, all military sites uh, containing those weapons. Point is that he could be doing a big master plan. You know, he might be putting off the, the big U.S. buildup that eventually is going to happen. Because in the end, it all going to come down to the same fact that uh, there's going to be a couple of skirmishes and there's going to be something really bad brewing over there. Because after a while, Saddam Hussein is going to know that, like, hey, there's a couple hundred thousand U.S. soldiers and they're not even a hundred, they're not even maybe 500 miles away. You know what I'm going to do? Saddam Hussein is going to say, since I can't win the war against U.S., he's going to get scared because there's a U.S. buildup. He's going to let some of the terrorists outside of uh, uh, Iraq, outside unit, take, get a hold of those weapons and use it somewhere else to put off the U.S. in attacking Iraq. And hopefully that won't happen because that, uh, it gets too crazy to think that uh, Saddam Hussein would do that, like give some other open uh, uh, another uh, uh, Bin Laden figure that has uh, been able to. Um... Oh, I fuck! Uh, can we erase this part again? Sorry about that technical difficulty. Oh, but I was saying that. Uh, uh, Saddam Hussein is going to get scared of a buildup and he's going to let somebody get a hold of the weapons of mass destruction and take it out of Iraq somehow with these outside terrorist units and use it somewhere else. You know, use it on the chemical plant here in the U.S. Or somehow do a dirty bomb or dirty nuke or whatever the fuck it, that it is that terrorists do when they go off on these little uh, cells all over on the U.S. soil. And uh, hopefully that one day won't come down to it, but it's just a matter of time because Saddam Hussein, he's an old guy now, so you know, what happens if he, if he ends up dying or gets assassinated or whatever, there's a chance for a democratic uh, 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 democracy hopefully to be able to prevail in Iraq. But the point is, he has to be toppled first. Hopefully he dies of the fucking chicken bone that he's hopefully eating, and I don't know if he eats chicken bone, but is that one sick fuck? And I, I just heard a couple days ago that he's responsible, Saddam Hussein. Um, if he doesn't like certain people, what he does, uh, he sends them up to his palace, and he has people hold him down, and then uh, they shove gasoline down his throat, and then Saddam Hussein lights him up with the uh, Zippo lighter. And this is the guy who's like supposed to be on the world platform of uh, world international politics. And all it, all it is, he's a freaking dictator. And all we have to thank for for this big mess is fucking uh, Bin Laden, of course, and George Bush, the first president. Uh, we have to blame fucking Stormin Norman fuck, uh, General Schwarzkopf. They were maybe 80, 100 miles away from Baghdad and they never went in. They never went in. They should have gone in there, looked for fucking Saddam Hussein, ransack the whole fucking city if they have to, you know, make it to a point where Saddam Hussein was not able to come back to his house because there was nothing left but just rubble. And then maybe he might have had to get a chance to get caught outside of Iraq and been charged with uh, crimes against humanity. 
but uh, that's the whole fix I have on the, the current terrorism uh, subject. And also on the subject of terrorism, uh, I guess there was a government report card uh, a year later, and, and they did a report card of, of how terrorism has affected America in terms of, uh, of uh, the way we uh, transfer ourselves from one coast to the other. And apparently the aviation industry has a, uh, a grade of A. I don't know about that. Uh, other transportation, including buses and cabs and subways, there is no guarantee that something can't blow up in there. And they gave, a, they gave it a, a report card a letter of a C. Okay, then also they talked about all ports and all both coasts of uh, the U.S., including the southern uh, edge. They say the ports are kind of safe, so they give it a, a report card of a letter B. Okay, then they, uh, in, in terms of grading the borders between uh, Mexico and the U.S. and the U.S. with Canada, they give it a big D, a B, a D plus, because any terrorist can come through anywhere at any certain point, and we wouldn't know it until something bad happens later on. Okay, the major public event, they give it an A plus because, like the Super Bowl, the Olympics. They were able to uh, protect hundreds of thousands of people by a turn to fighter jets, uh, patrols, uh, soldiers, and all that, and radiation sniffing, uh, uh, you know, those little robots you see that detect bombs and all that. So that's that. And then for nuclear plants and chemical plants, they give it a big F because apparently, like I said before on the show, there, is no, uh, there ain't enough money to provide security for chemical plants and nuclear plants. So they're, out of everything in the country right now, they are the most vulnerable. So the fucking people who really care will have to like somehow bring some tax money, bring it into the point of where it's a, not a big, uh, let's see, big change in the federal government. But, but rerouting some of the money somehow, somewhere. Because it's gonna take something that big and drastic, something worse than 1979 Three Mile nuclear accident. You know, Three Mile Island a nuclear accident. You know, whatever happened with this is gonna be worse. Okay, then the, uh, they say for water, food, and uh, water and food in the U.S. basically is somewhat safe, so they give it a grade of B. Okay, then for public buildings, uh, they say your chances now is a little, not lower or whatever, but uh, it's not as protected enough or like anything else, so they give it a, a, a report card letter of C. Of C. Oh yeah, and I just forgot too, there were three terrorists found in Florida. I really don't know much about this one. Can you, you help me? hear about No, uh-uh. They were bra sitting in like a Denny's or something and they were bragging like 913 is going to be worse than 911 and some woman overheard it, got their plates called them in and they got pulled over. Uh, the woman heard them in Georgia and they got pulled over in Florida and dogs sniffed traces of explosives in the car. So you hear that people, see, I, even though we speak, see I'm not really aware of this because I had a busy day, I had to work. But I guess three terrorists found in Florida that apparently they were making terroristic threats saying 913 was going to be worse than 911. Yeah, apparently someone overheard them and apparently someone overheard them in Georgia eventually got caught in Florida and the dogs found a residue of explosive. So see people get the matter of time before these fucking fucks be doing all this shit all over again. And you gotta remember, we, we're so concerned with the international threat we also have to be concerned with the inside, like the paramilitary groups, like the Timothy McVeigh kind of bullshit that happened back in 95. We have to worry about that. Those fucks are out there too. Okay, okay. And then, uh, that's all I'm, that's all I'm gonna talk about that terrorism for now. It's Friday night, I know. Okay, uh, we all remember the Van Damme girl that was murdered not too long ago, earlier this year. Apparently the next door neighbor abducted her, uh, strangled her, raped her, and left, uh, uh, left her corpse on the side of the road. Apparently he got the death penalty this morning. So hip hip hooray, eye for an eye, that's what I have to say. Okay, okay.
Okay, okay. Uh, on a funny note, on a funny note, on a funny note, uh, we all remember when Mick Jagger uh, got the uh, award for knighthood. Apparently, he, Keith Richard, when he found out that Mick Jagger got the knighthood, he apparently went berserk. <laughs> and we all know Keith Richards, I mean, he had fucking goat blood and fucking sheep blood. There ain't no human blood left in his body. That guy had so much drugs in his body, they had a transfusion, a good blood transfusion on everything. And that guy went berserk when homeboy, uh, homeboy uh, band member Mick Jagger won the knighthood. So what the fuck? What the hell? Okay, now I'm gonna go off on, on a crazy news, crazy news. Road workers in London uh, painted over a dead badger. Uh, they didn't want to pick up the dead badger so they can paint it over the badger. And you know, badgers are pretty big. So they painted over the badger and all these passive buyers were like taking pictures of it. And those road workers are, uh, are in trouble now. See, it happens, it happens in Tucson. I see every time someone, they're too lazy so they go over tire scrapings and beer cans. It happened, and then they wonder, oh, they never last any longer than two years, and it fades away. Yeah, it fades away as you paint over something that could eventually move and get washed away. So I guess city planning don't work like that. They can, they can take their time reading magazines and doing like some fucked up shopping, and we'll just name it fucking Maxim Street, and you know, they don't care, you know. They don't care. Okay, we're going to talk about Iraq, neighbor Iran. Apparently, a man in Iran uh, was convinced that his seven-year-old daughter was raped by an uncle, so therefore she was a disgrace to the family and to the honor and dignity that they have. So she, he cut her head off. Fucking dad cuts off his seven-year-old heads off because he thinks his little girl just got raped by his brother. So therefore, the girl's in the wrong twice fold. She got raped, and it's by the brother. So therefore, she don't deserve to live, so he cut her head off. And this is how I ran. I'm sorry, I know they're good people. I know they, they do what they gotta do to stay alive. But that mentality will not work in the U.S. And that's why, that's why we have these nice, these awesome soldiers and service people doing the job that they have to do, so I'm very grateful. But what the fuck is that about? Well, and then the, the other neighbor says, oh, that's normal. Fucking normal. Fucking normal my ass. Well, these are the same kind of people that go crazy over some, some fucking fallen dictator who fucking fuck who died a while back. And they're all beating their heads and pulling out their hair. You know, like, you don't know me. I don't know you. What the fuck? I don't care what you've done for the country. I'm sorry. I'm going off on the Iran. The Iranian. If you remember Pee Wee Herman and like Ching Chong movie. I shouldn't even be saying that. Okay, in London, uh, at Cambridge University, the, the researcher decided to see uh, how lab mice could die. Uh, they wanted to see how many ways a lab mice could die. So what they fucking did, can you believe this? Hear this. They fucking pumped all these mice up with fucking crystal methamphetamine. And then they fucking put the fucking big ass, loud ass speaker doing the prodigy music. <laughs> they died in a matter of minutes. <laughs> Apparently that's inhumane, so those people are under investigation. But yeah, you, as you, don't, you don't think that you get a mouse, inject crypto methamphetamine, throw them in a fucking cage, you put a fucking big old speaker of the prodigy. You know, you crank it up, of course they're gonna go nuts so when their heart breaks. Give me that money, you, you're doing that research. We can make a bomb ass movie out here in Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> fucking asshole. And then they wonder why people don't wanna go to Cambridge University in fucking London. Is that what they're doing? Then I, I don't wanna go to London. No, I, I'm lying, I do wanna go. <laughs> okay. A man in uh, in Calgary, Alberta, in Canada, he bought a suitcase for a dollar, took it home, opened it up, and there was 11 pounds of cocaine in the fucking suitcase, man. Can you believe that shit? 
a guy buys a fucking suitcase for a dollar, like a yard sale bullshit, like a little secondhand place. He buys his suitcase for a dollar, he goes home, he's like, bam, opens it up, and there's 11 pounds of cocaine worth 180,000. Uncut, they said, pure. That sounds like something out of the movie. Like, where the hell is like Queen Tarantino at when this shit happens? I guess that's it. I'm out of here. Episode uh, 72. I hope you enjoy all the clips. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Episode 73. Until then, I'm out of here. I have stuff to do. I guess. I gotta go. Bye. One, two, four. Will the real Ray Daniel please stand up? 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 You all act like you've never seen a brown person before. Just like our clique smoking bunk and doing crack in 94. And everyone say look at the forbidden zone, rip out of the hookah and more. The only difference is cluckers on TV like you know, making them G's. And still hanging out being baked and selling out just like we did back in the day when we were in Sunset Foothills. But, straight up toil. We just keep going. We're strong. That's the way we are. We grew up. So, one more time, let me Number tell you. Mark. It goes. Yes, sir. All you TV acts are scared, cause you know, we got the top ratings on this air. The only difference is, we've been doing this for 13 years. Marty running around, grabbing his you know what. But he's so cute though, hee hee hee. And that's why we say, Ray, Rob, Roach, Paul, Stoney, Louie, Rudy, even Cliff, Coy with the mafioso, and all I forgot, I'm holding a 40. Don't miss it, mother booger. It was, I probably recorded over it.